Hello and welcome to Fire Emblem Three Hopes. A little bit earlier than I expected, this game was slated to come out on the 24th of June, however they released the demo today and apparently you can carry on your progress from the demo into the main game, which means that we can play up to chapter 4 right now, which I'm super excited to do because I got unexpectedly hooked by Three Houses, which this is a spin-off of. Three Houses, we played through all the different routes, we played through the DLC and this world and the characters and the way that they interacted really just drew me in. However, one thing I really liked about Three Houses was the combat system, the tactical side, and that isn't in this game. What's in this game is something more akin to Persona 5 Strikers, which is the previous game that I played by these developers, which is much more of an action-focused game. It has a couple of elements that draw from the base game, similar to how Persona 5 Strikers did, but it's definitely its own thing, and I'm interested to see whether I like that more or less. I played through the tutorial, and I'm not 100% sold on it yet, but there's more mechanics that you don't get in the tutorial, which you can see if you have a look at the uh, controller bindings. So, you know, it might be that the full story is not there yet, but I'm still excited to see how the story goes. Talking about the story, and we're going to get into Three Houses spoilers here, it looks like this is set um, in a completely different timeline to the base game. From what I've seen in the tutorial and what I've seen in the trailers, it looks like there's a divergence point um, from the main kind of storyline, the main branch of the storyline, um, before like the start of Three Houses, and that's what leads this um, game story to happen. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play out, but yeah, again, I'm interested to see because there were a lot of kind of open-ended bits to the story of Three Houses. A lot of the characters had self-contained stories which were resolved, but what weren't resolved were a lot of the villains. Um, there were a lot of um, bits about the villains that were hinted at, or like they talked about events that were happening, or they mentioned characters doing things, but you never actually ran into them. So. What I'm hoping for this one is it gives you a way to see who these characters are that you didn't get to see in the main one, and a little bit of what else was happening at the time. So, we're going to jump in, and we're going to go for a new game. We're going to play it on hard, because um, I like a little bit of a challenge. And then on this one, now, this is interesting. Um, I did play all of Three Houses on Classic, and I'm going to play this one on Classic. I kind of play Classic as a, if a character dies, you've effectively failed the mission. I don't know how difficult this is going to be, however. I don't know whether this game's difficulty is for this is easier, less, eas or harder than, a, you know, in a tactical kind of view. I don't know what mechanics you have for stopping this, but hey, we're going to play in the Classic and we'll see how it goes. If all else fails, uh, we should be able to change it by just go, I'll just go back and play it on casual up until the point where we were at. So yeah. Also, we won't see any of this in the demo because it's from chapter 4 onwards and, well, you only get to chapter 4 in a demo. So, let's go with that. Now, there are two different uh, things you can do here. You can go for strategic stuff, which is what I'm going to go with. So, level up stats, mission briefs, mid-battle tutorial windows, definitely seems like what I'm after. Or we can, you can just go pure action game. I want to do this one. I want to try and have as much strategy as possible because, well, we're playing on hard and I kind of think that's going to be useful. Yes. We will do a little save and jump in.
freeloader, huh? I know you're napping around here somewhere. On your feet and back to work already, yeah? Ugh, finally. Come on, sunshine. Up and at him. Okay, so this is where we get to choose our character. We can, much like in Three Houses, play a male or a female. We're going to play a male this time. And we're going to differ from the naming convention that I would usually go for hey, when we get, get there. Up already. Ugh, I'm sorry. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Did your head spring a leak while you were napping? Better see if you can even remember your name. Yes, I jumped forward slightly. We're going to stick with the base game's name. We'll see why in just a little bit. It's going to make it easier to uh, tell who the characters are. We're going to play as Shez. Well, looks like there's hope for you yet. Uh, let's apologize. <sighs> Apologies, friend. I'm all right. Is the battle at hand? Of course it is. Why else would I be standing here? You heard who we're up against, yeah? Gerald's mercenaries. Oh ho. Also, um, it kinda looks like he's wearing some of the bandit armor. But I wonder whether that's important. Gonna be one hell of a fight if true, especially if the Ashen Demon is here. Don't like a smidge of what I've heard about that fella. Or was it a woman? Leave it to you to fumble the details. <laughs> did you even catch this Ashen Demon's name? Of course I did. It was I... by the goddess, it's right on the tip of my tongue. And this is why I didn't name our character as I would usually do, just name the Malpex, is because we have to name this one. And I feel like it makes sense, especially as it defaults to the name that you have on your Switch. So I'm assuming maybe at some point we'll be playing as this character, or maybe because you're playing like the other side from Three Houses, they're expecting that to be your canonical name, so yeah. That's what we're going to go with. It is going to be a little bit odd, however. Yeah, that's it. Demon or no demon, our job is to fight and win. <laughs> you sound just like the captain. I know they paid up front, but come on. Well, at least one of you has some courage. You've certainly come a long way since I plucked you from that mountain village. But this battle is about more than just victory. That's a very odd hat she has on. Gerald's team has a sterling reputation. Rumor has it they've never blundered even a single job. But once we put them to rout, we'll finally be the greatest mercenaries in all of Leicester. Enemy activity detected, Captain. Looks like we'll be fighting by moonlight. Mind you don't kill each other in the dark. Wasn't expecting a fight so soon, but I guess there's nothing for it. You ready? Of course. Um, yeah, let's just wish him luck. Ready as I'll ever be. Good luck, friend. And double to you. All right, let's get down to business. We're up against Gerald's mercenaries. Okay, so this is what the game looks like now. Very out. different in terms of presentation from Three Houses, as you Drive can immediately see. Um, also, our character does move very, very, very quickly in between areas, like super quickly. Um, now, the combat may look a little bit bland just for the start of the tutorial, but trust me, they're adding in more stuff. Like, initially we're just going to have attacks. It's going to very, very quickly ramp up into something a little bit more. Time to see what you're made of. Right. So, we have our basic attack. Team up with Getz and Lasley to defeat the nearby enemies. So, we have a basic attack, and then we have X, which is a strong attack, which we can use after the basic attack. And there's a bunch of combos. Don't need to learn them right now, because on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll roughly see what we're doing here. So we can do, like, four basic attacks here. It's just something like that. Or you can do something like this. A little jump attack. Oh, we also have every class has its own unique class action. Shares is currently a Myrmidon. Hold X to charge the class gauge and release it 
to perform a sweeping attack. You can move while charging. Press and hold X during a strong attack to reduce the charge time of the next class action. Now I believe that's just for this class, other classes have their own things going on. So we're going to continue with our um, like what do things do. So there's our um, one attack followed by strong and then we can do two weak and then strong. Right, class action is this one. Slice around and then if we do something like this I think. It, it, I think charges less quick. I think it charges quicker. Not 100% sure about that one. There we go. Yeah, it charges slightly quicker by doing like this and holding down the button. But anyway. Right, we've defeated the enemies. Time to head on forward. Tougher than this. Hey, you! Clear out that group over there. Defeat the mercenary captain. During battle, we'd be tasked with various missions. Main missions must be completed in order to win the battle. And that one's fair. I think I got that one. Right, so you see over there we got... Yeah, well there we go, it's going to tell us. We've got a mercenary captain. These are kind of the main enemies that you're fighting. Everything that we fought up until this point are just grunts. They're just meant to be there to look flashy when you kill them. These are the guys that actually matter. These are the guys with health bars and the ones that we may need tactics in the future to defeat. When an arrow is displayed over an enemy's head, press the right stick to lock onto them. While locked on, the camera will stay focused on your target. Move it left and right to change targets. So, see, here we have the mercenary captain, and we can just defeat him in the same way that we're defeating everyone else. We have guard, and we have dodge. Now, there is um, something called perfect guarding, which it hasn't given me a tutorial for yet, but we did see, you do see a little bit later in this tutorial. Uh, so, basically, if you press guard at the right moment, it'll do a parry. Other than that, it works much the way you would expect. Guard reduces damage, dodge um, removes damage by you just not being there. Okay, uh, let's do one of these to clear out some space. And then get in on this guy. Nice. Press the right bumper to display quick menu 1. When it is displayed, press Y or X to use combat arts or magic. Now this is the bit which is as Fire Emblem specific. Like, what we've had up until this point is kind of standard things for um, Warriors games, I think is what they're generally referred to as. Um, what we've got here is what the Fire Emblem aspect is. So it's using your combat arts and your magic, and it's basically abilities signed to a button. Um, you cannot use the same combat art or magic multiple times in a row, and instead must wait for a certain amount of time. Using combat arts and magic will reduce your weapon's durability. If its durability gets too low, you will be unable to use corresponding combat arts or magic. Durability will be restored at the end of battle. I think it might be turned off for the tutorial, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm fairly certain it's turned off for the tutorial. There we go. Do a little one of those. And we got him. Nice. Pick up green tonics to restore your HP gauge. Just do a little spin there to get rid of all these people around us. Yeah. Then we'll get our I'll HP take back. Stronghold over this way, yeah? You get the one over there. Can't wait to wrap this up so we can all drown ourselves in ale. I'm just waiting for them to finish talking. Right. Advance on the ru a village ruins path. So up here. So let's just clear these guys out. And continue advancing. Okay. Battlefields contain bases controlled by the forces in the battle. These serve as an origin point for each side soldiers. You can capture a base by defeating the base commander. So we defeat them, we get a spawner basically. Otherwise they get a spawner. So these are these little things to the side. Right, let's kill this guy. Just do a spin to clear everything around us. And you'll now see that this is blue so our side should start spawning from it. If I understand it correctly, unless we need all of them. And clear them. There we go. Fairly straightforward. Uh, so now I believe at our side are going to spawn from these. So if I now head forward, we can get this stronghold. Drain the stronghold captain's stun gauge and defeat them with a critical rush. So another new mechanic. At times, a stun gauge will appear over an enemy commander's head. Continue attacking to completely deplete the gauge, then press X to perform a critical rush. 
The stun gauge displays where you land at certain attacks against the enemy, or um, when you land certain attacks against the enemy, or when the enemy performs certain moves. The stun gauge displays when hitting an enemy with an offensive combat art or magic, executing a perfect guard, so that's basically blocking at the right time. An enemy is preparing to use combat arts or magic, an attack knocks an enemy back. Okay, so target there. Do one of these to clear out a bunch of space for us to fight and then fight. There we go. I think I just performed the thing where you hold down X for the first time ever. Because like, you see it charged like instantly. I think it just gave it to us earlier to be like, hey, you're, um, we're not going to force you to actually have to uh, get this right to pass the tutorial. I'm assuming we're going to have to learn these as we get through the game. And then we press this and lots of explosions. Battlefields contain strongholds that are controlled by the various forces engaged in battle. Enemies and allies alike will slowly regain HP while in a stronghold under their own control. You can capture a stronghold by defeating the, uh, the stronghold captain. So now we've taken it, we can stand here and get our HP back. Pick up purple crystals to restore your weapon's durability. So let's go over here, get one of those. So we got some durability back. Gerald's main the force main has appeared. Is We're saved. Now push, push the enemy back. About time a foe with some teeth showed up, but they still don't stand a chance against Burling's mercenaries. Defeat Gerald's mercenaries' main force. Alpax, the Ashen now, Demon appeared. Isn't this a sight? You must be the infamous Ashen Demon. I can't wait to tear you apart. This will be the end of the Ashen Demon. No one can beat the captain. Okay, just gave it time to let that finish there. So now we need to press a way forward. Uh, there is only one path on this one. If we were, you know, in a different map, we could go different directions. But right now, one path forward directly to the story. Let's get this stronghold here. Out. Let's just dodge that one there. Let, uh, maybe hit with one of these. Nice. Ooh, Lasley has died. Not great. Definitely. He's blocking. Okay. Another wrath strike. Captain Burling is nearly routed. And we got the stronghold captain. Geralt's mercenaries uh, deployed reinforcements. Ow, 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 ow. Stop hitting me. Warrior specials. When your warrior gauge is full, press A to unleash a warrior special. To fill the warrior gauge, deal damage to enemies, take damage from enemies, pick up yellow tonics. So I think this is one of the reasons why there are quite so many small enemies around, is to give you something to fill your warrior's gauge with, basically. Oh, so let's do it. Take this. Yeah. I've got you now. It's not over. Right. Cool. And we can grab the HP and that'll heal us up. No. Just when my dream was finally in sight. You monster. Captain Burling has died. We've got one way we can go. It's this way. What are we gonna do now? Right, we gotta go. We gotta go fight. So, large amount of enemies. We know what to do here. Spin. Do it again. Is there anything along I know it says we have to go this way. Is there anything along this way? I can go along this way. Uh, when testing. Uh, there is absolutely nothing here. Okay. Yeah, like, absolutely nothing. Okay. Right, so let's head in here. Trying to, the camera's a little bit jumpy. I'll see if there's a way of fixing that uh, later at some point, but um, yeah, I'll try and keep it smooth. And here we have it, the Ashen Demon. He still looks very confused. Stand down or die. We're gonna stand, we're gonna fight, and we're gonna avenge the captain. Defeat Alpax and avenge Captain Burling. 
Well, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I so scared? It's just one merc. Perhaps because the merc doesn't take any damage when we hit them. Run while you can. Gets has died. Yes, no. This can't be happening. of this world. I will not allow it to perish with you. Oh. Okay, I haven't seen this. I skipped the cutscene previously. Huh. I've got a lot of questions. But as I promised, the when combat's gonna ramp power, up. <laughs> no idea. But it's just what I need to bring you down. Here it comes. See ya! Did I actually hit? You're done! Nope. Alright, good job, me. We're here to help. Their elite soldiers come in. Alpax temporarily fell back to assess the situation. Right, now we have to defeat the elites. One of those. Ow, ow, ow. Well, at least we can do this. That's a fair amount of damage. Not a lot of health left. Interesting. You're fighting like an entirely different person. He's reappeared. I have no HP. Well, this is not good. That's enough. We did what we came to do. Everyone, fall back. What? Witness my true power. Sorry, but this fight is over. Hey. Wait! Why? We've achieved our goal. Your job was to stop us, and you failed. <laughs> I think we've said more words than we said in the entirety of Three Houses, or sure, I should say Alpax has said more words than he said in the entirety of Three Houses. Another time, perhaps. Uh, I believe the default name is Byleth. Hey! We're not done here! <laughs> Wait. Why am I... so... Tired. Huh? Where am I? That is a great question. Oh good, you're awake. Not sure I would have been able to sleep at night with your <laughs> blood on my hands. Okay. Uh, what's going on? Am I dead? No, not yet. And you're not a good listener either. Did I not just say how pleased I am that you're still alive? You did, that's true. Regardless, I'm a being who exists on the edge of dreams and reality. You may call me Arval. Arval, huh? But for now, let me speak plain. You are slated to die. Right now, I'm the only thing holding your meager life together. And to be blunt, it's beginning to tire me. Um, thank you? Oh, oh my. That's the first time anyone has ever shown me gratitude. And I must say, I like it very much. 
Hear me well. You are a crucial piece of this world's cyclical... Yeah, uh, no, this will never do. You're far too groggy to absorb what I'm saying. It sounds like you're acknowledging the fact that there are multiple routes in the game that people play through multiple times in three houses, and that he's part of this. The, the fact that people can just restart and try something else. For now. I needn't tell you how you'll get back on your feet. I need only convince you that you will. Back on my feet? I don't understand. I'm already up and about. Ah, perhaps here you are. But not in reality, where it counts. <laughs> your cluelessness is actually quite charming. I think you're starting to grow on me. Still, the important thing is what you do after you wake. And what should that be? Recall, please, how the Ashen Demon bested you. Came within an inch of snuffing out your life. If you attempt the fight again the same way, you will reach the same conclusion. This would force me to step in once more, which would be most annoying and also rather counterproductive, if I'm honest. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna vow to become stronger. Then I'll get stronger. The man I am now will seem like a little kid in comparison. And one day, I will surpass the Ashen Demon. I swear it. Indeed. My captain and comrades are dead. The company is finished. So, there's only one thing I can do. Start over. Huh. I thought you'd be more sentimental. Did they not take you in? Care for you? Well, gold's the only thing that ever held us together. And death is something we're all too used to. I never knew my real parents, and I lost the mother who raised me. Partings just come easy to me, I guess. The best way to honor my fallen comrades is by training hard and growing even stronger. Then I'll crush Geralt's mercenaries and the Ashen Demon with them. That's what I'm going to live for now. Oh, but I like your spirit. Though I expected no less from my partner in destiny. I'm sorry, what? Great question. What is that? Yes, I suppose that was a bit sudden. I should remember, take intimacy in smaller steps. The point is that I'm here to guide you, and I promise to help you find the strength to see your dreams realized. Alright, well, I have no idea what's going on, but it's intriguing. Prologue. A chance encounter. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a goddess, has existed for uncountable ages. Now, three ruling powers control the land. To the south is a region held for more than a thousand years by the Adrestian Empire. To the north is the holy kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. And to the east, a league of nobles that bends no knee rules the Leicester Alliance. Though once consumed in war, these three powers now exist in relative harmony. Nestled between them is Garrig Mach Monastery, seat of the Church of Seros, the land's widely practiced faith and a power that helps to maintain peace across the continent. Not far from the monastery, at the northern edge of the empire, is a small village called Ramire, and west of this place stretches a forest where a lone mercenary awaits. Hey, wake up! So this is six months later, so we've had six months of getting stronger. Ugh, how many times must we do this? Get up already! Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I heard someone calling me. It's still dark out, though. Okay, so when he's awake, he has no idea about the person in his head. Interesting. Hello, yes, I was calling you. Many times, I might add. <sighs> Come on, I told you not to sneak up on me like that. Never mind, he can completely hear her. As if I have a choice. 
Do you know how many times you would have died by now if not for me? I'll tell you. 22. The three times you left off a cliff to quote unquote get tougher saved you. Those five mad attempts to dispatch a horde of monsters by yourself saved you. And tonight, despite my repeated warnings, you took the wrong path and ended up having to sleep on a bed of leaves in the middle of the woods. Um, let's just apologize again. You're right. This was all my fault, and I'm sorry. Strange. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, yet somehow I'm the one who feels bad now. I must remember this tactic. At any rate, we all make a few mistakes along the way. And by we, I mean you. And by a few, I mean far, far more than average. Now then, with that out of the way, would you like to know why I've roused you from your mud-caked slumber? Actually, it's probably easier to show rather than tell at this point. Look over there, if you would. Hmm? Stop plowing ahead, Claude. You're going to get us lost. Now here are three very familiar figures. Um, I also believe that Ramire Village is where in three houses, um, the Ashen Demon, Byleth, um, who, whatever you want to call them, that's where the game starts and that's where you meet these three. So I'm assuming the divergence point is, apart from just the initial fight we're in, is that this character is going to meet them before um, Byleth has a chance to meet them. Lost schmost. We've got it on Imperial authority that this is the way to the village. <sighs> True, I said there was a village, but how could anyone know where it is in the thick of these mountains? I can't even say for certain where we are in all this gloom. Okay, new plan. I'll rely on my keen senses to navigate. Lucky for you, they're sharp as an arrow. Hold, both of you. Someone's here. Another bandit, perhaps? They're mistaking you for some common backwater thief. What cheek. Hold on there. I'm no bandit. I'm a mercenary. Well, that makes everything better. A bandit would be far less out of place in these woods than a sellsword. What brings you here? We've no time for an interrogation. Our pursuers are closing in. I don't know who you people are or what you want, but I think introductions can wait. You clearly need every blade you can find, and my pockets have been feeling awfully light lately. What do you say? Well, since you're here, do you mind stepping in and helping us chase off these scary bandits? Don't worry about payment. You'll receive plenty of coin. If we survive, that is. Defeat the thief to clear the way for Edelgard, Dimitri, and Claude. Chez changed classes and is now a Flugil. Chez learned a unique ability. There are three types of unique abilities, action, support, and tactical. During battle, press the left bumper and X to check the class and unique abilities of the unit you are currently controlling. Alright. So, uh, the first ability we have is Shadow Flash. Gain a chance to perform a few attacks that instantly defeat non-commander units. Chance increases with hit count. Press um, ZR to dash a short distance. So you can do like a little um, dash, like it's showing on the top right of the screen here. Number two. When HP is 90% or above, increases the warrior gauge fill rate. Okay, so that's pretty much just something that we can leave and forget about. When ordered to attack, increases damage dealt to enemies by 30%. Now I believe that there is a tactics layer where you can kind of issue orders to your individual units. I'm not entirely sure how this works yet, but I'm assuming we're going to learn very soon. Right, so. We can now dash, we still have like Grounder and Wrath Strike, and we still have a bunch of attacks. Like this one. Just gonna focus on the Thief here. Ooh, we have a different class action which I was seeing here. Is that displayed in here? Oh, there we go. A sword wielding class exclusive to Shez. Can use magic. Strong against axes, hold X during any strong chance, uh, strong attack to change the number of attacks. 
Press X to launch an attack. The class gauge will charge over time and as you defeat enemies. I'm assuming the fact that it tells you that it will charge over time in the enemies ones means that some classes will not work that way. Like some might only be enemies, some might only be time. Anyway. When the class gauge fills completely, you'll add a sword icon to your stock, max 2. If you have two sword icons in your stock, press uh, chain X to change your attack. What? Well, I have no idea what you're talking about, but that's okay. That seems pretty good. Whatever we did there, do more of that. Yeah, okay. I just like basically hit buttons and it worked. Item drop resources. Pick up a resource pouch and you'll acquire resources like ingredients and ore after the battle. The value of the resources depends on the color of the pouch. Uh, from best to worst. So red is best, then orange, then yellow, then green, then blue. So blue is um, not worth getting, but red is really worth getting. Cool. Uh, so I'm assuming there's a pouch. Oh, I got it. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Costas. The villain they are. Kill them all. that you fight in the tutorial of Three Houses. Okay. So yes, it does appear to be working much the way that I thought it was here. Uh, so defeat the thieves and secure the escape route. Fighting for them now, are ya? Then you can die with their new friends. That implies that he knows us. Okay, interesting. Focus on this guy. Oh, Shez is fighting at a disadvantage. Advantage icons will be displayed on the mini map or above enemy commanders' heads when you have an effect that offers you an advantage against them. The more advantageous effects you have against the enemy, the more up arrows there will be, and the easier it will be to decrease their stun gauge. The enemy will also get knocked back more easily when attacked. Advantage can be determined by class. Check class abilities on the status screen to see detailed information on which classes have a strong advantage against which enemies. This is a lot of information all at once. I'm assuming that after doing it for a little bit, it'll become, you know, more clear, but yeah, I, it is a lot of information. Being a fighter class equipped with an axe, Edelgard has a strong advantage against lance-wielding enemies. Okay. Well, does that... Oh, now I'm controlling Edel... Whoa! Let me show you a trick for dealing with heavily defended enemies. Okay, uh, so now we're Edelgard. Didn't expect for it to do that. So, imbue attacks with fire is her unique ability. Okay. Um, that appears to just be something that's on permanently. Or is that... It doesn't look like I have to press a button for that to happen. Causes enemies that are guarding to nonetheless sustain 50% of calculated damage. So if they're guarding, we still do damage to them. When ordered to attack, reduces damage received from enemies by 30%. Hmm, cool. And um, then what class is she? Class proficient against... Uh, uh, proficient in axes, bows, and gauntlets. Strong against lances. Press X when the last gauge is charged to unleash a powerful attack. Very straightforward. And it will charge over time and when landing attack. So she doesn't get any for defeating enemies. She only gets them for hitting people. Okay. Cool. It says press X for details. Oh, okay. 25% chance to increase the damage dealt by combat arts. That's the only detail we get in details. What if I do this? Same thing. So that's from our minor crest of Seros level 1. Okay. To tend to your wounds, um, one of those. Vulinaries. Press right bumper and B to use a vulinary and restore your HP. Your number of available vulinaries will be refilled at the end of each battle. Uh, e? There we go. Sorry. Slightly confused because I've been using an Xbox controller and I was like, I pressed B. No. On the switch, uh, and B is the bottom button. Don't overstep, Edelgard. Okay. Two of the thieves remain. Oh, like up here? Oh, I mean two commanders remain. I see. Is there anything else on the maps like that's worth looking for? There are, there are these areas. No, it doesn't look like there's anything worth getting here. Okay. That's fine. Maybe well, maybe later. Suppose my turn has arrived. Okay, I'm assuming we're gonna switch to being Dimitri. Oh, it's going to show us how to switch. Press up and down to switch the unit you're currently controlling. You can also select a unit to control from the orders screen. 
Dimitri is a soldier class with a strong advantage against sword-wielding uh, sword enemies, so switch to him when fighting enemies with swords. Before that, I just want to quickly check something. Uh, I just want to quickly check something here. Uh, so, ah, there's no details button on Chez. Okay. I just want to see whether he had a crest or something like that. Okay, Dimitri, details. 20% chance to increase damage dealt by combat arts in exchange for greatly increasing the weapon durability cost. Okay. So he gets Azure Lightning, so imbues attacks with lightning. Slightly increases damage to enemy HP and stun gauges when sending them flying. When ordered to attack, increases damage dealt to enemies by 30%. It's last strong against swords. Uh, press X repeatedly to thrust multiple times in a row. Your final attack will be strengthened based on the number of attacks in the combo. Okay. So this doesn't say that there's any way to like charge it up or uh, like to charge up a gauge. This just says that you can just press it multiple times in a row. Like I mean, there is still a gauge, but interesting. Yeah, you can just sit here forever and attack. Ow. There we go. Another attack. Oh. Well, he's dead. Apologies, but it was you or me. Just who are these people anyway? All three of them have crests. Huh. Yeah, okay, so that's telling us about the crest effects. What's interesting to me is that Arval does not know about uh, these three. I'd assume that she was kind of doing something where it's like guiding us into the position to change history. But that doesn't appear to be it at all. Okay, so slightly different than I'd initially thought from seeing the characters. So this is just a coincidence. What's wrong with you? They're just a bunch of brats. Stop nothing over here, yourself. nothing over it's here. Your ground already. Okay. Base captain. Use this sword, okay. Well, they're dead. Easy enough. So Shaz just runs off on his own. Is it Claude time? I think it's Claude time. I think it's Claude time. Yeah. No problem. So it'll be Claude. A weapon, combat art, or magic that is extra effective gives it a huge advantage against a specific enemy. When extra effective, you have three tiers greater advantage against the enemy. You deal greater damage the stun gauge display, uh, displays upon all attacks. Examples of skills that grant extra effectiveness. Uh, effective against armored units. Um, so extra effective against armored knights. I think that's magic is effective against armor. Cavalry is lances. Flyers is our bows, and then monsters, I don't know. But I assume something has an effect against them. Flying classes, such as Pegasus Knight and Wyvern Riders, are vulnerable to the ability effective versus flyers. Switch your active unit to Claude, who has a bow equipped. I got it. Right. Uh, let's do this and see what's up about him. So Dust Cloud imbues attacks with wind. Slightly increases the awakening gauge fill rate when attacking enemies launched into the air. When ordered to defend, increases um, damage dealt to enemies by 30%. He also has a crest, which has a 15% chance to recover own HP when landing a combat arm. Okay, hold X to charge the class gauge and rain arrows in the area targeted. So you charge the class gauge and then rain arrows on that area. Cool. Press and hold X during a strong attack uh, to reduce the charge time of the next class action. I'm a master okay. of strategy, but I'm not really used to being. So that's my base lines. captain there. Right, all the way up. Ooh. Uh, shoot. Okay, uh, bows are a little bit odd. I kind of expected it to like uh, lock on direction with bows. It's kind of odd it doesn't, but that's okay. Okay, uh, let's try something different. Let's try, um, curved shot. Okay, you, you do still need to be facing them. Spiral shot? That worked pretty well. How about, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do, yeah, how about that? Okay, that's just basic attack. How about this? There we go. That's what I was looking for. Ah, but that hits a certain distance away. Interesting. Cool. Oh, if we go in closer, we can do that um, kill. Right? There we go. Perfect. 
I think bows are a little awkward there, but uh, that's okay. I do kind of expect when you lock onto an enemy to attack in the enemy's direction. I guess it's only for camera in this game. It would be wise to move through the forest and take down the strongholds as we go. Try and keep an eye on who we're fighting, and make sure we've got the right person leading the charge at the right time. Okay, so, order Edelgard, Dimitri, and Claude to seize strongholds. So, issuing orders. Pressing plus during battles to issue orders. From here, you can use A to select units and issue orders. You can order a unit to move to a selected location, attack enemies and capture enemy strongholds, guard allies and defend allied strongholds, heal using villainaries. You can use auto battle to determine the course of action for your units you don't give direct orders to. Issue orders to an ally. Okay, so this is more like the Fire Emblem I'm aware, I, I'm aware of. So I'm assuming what you're meant to do is you're meant to go like, ah, this guy uses an axe, so I'm going to send you against him. Okay, uh, so Bo is obviously going to be Tlod. So we're going to say Tlod attack here. Which, it says that Tlod has an 89% chance Let's of taking it. I'm assuming that's if we do nothing. Sword is here Edelgard. No mistakes. There we go. Edelgard doesn't have the greatest advantage against that enemy. Oh, sorry, is Sword going to be you? 89%. Okay. Oh, is there a f one further away? 92%. Okay. Let's go with you then. But do you not have to walk against. through this one to get there? Okay. If you say so. We will proceed as planned. You can attack here. We 94%. To perform to the best of our You've issued orders to all your allies. Use shares to capture the remaining strongholds. You can switch between the orders and battle screen with plus. My turn. Okay. We can also do this, because we can, uh, we've can. we got the teleport ability. Seize the strongholds. So what's this? Pots. Break pots you find on the battlefield to receive gold or recovery items depending on the color of the pot. Okay, cool. That seemed to work. Just focus on that one. This will help okay. secure our victory. <laughs> one of those. I think we want four. Then one of those. Perfect. Nice AOE. We'll make good use of this. And they're dead. Edelgard defeated the thief. Oh, she just ran straight through and defeated it. Okay, we got a new material. Nice. Enough and we're done here. Enough of the strategy nonsense. Oh, that, that sounds like the pitch for the game. Enough of that strategy nonsense. Right. Um, dodge. Right. Oh. Hello. It's Aloise. Repent, foul bandits. The Knights of Seros are here, and we'll cut you down for terrorizing our students. Stand down. Another confirmation that um, this, this is set like in an alternate thing where we were the first people to meet them. Just because he usually meets um, the Byleth character. Right, a bit of spinning. They're going to make a last ditch effort to rush our position. Defeat Costas. Victory conditions have changed. All out offensive. Select all out offensive from orders, and all available units will attack a selected target. This is a good option for when you simply want to overwhelm the enemy with force. Um, okay. Other all out offensive. Resume the battle and defeat Costas with your allies. Form ranks and capture okay. those Quickly now. Uh, focus. Go for it. Also, the music is a remix, I think, of the battle music from um, Three Houses. Which is cool. I like it. They did the same thing with Persona 5 Strikers, where they remixed the bass soundtrack. And I liked what they did in Strikers more than what they did it, uh, like more than the default soundtrack. So I hope it's the same here. 
Right. So where's Costas? Awakening. When Awakening gauge is filled, press uh, right bumper and A to awaken. Unit will remain awakened until the gauge depletes. You can press it to cancel the awakened state. When awake or while awakened, all attacks will make the stun gauge appear. The stun gauge will deplete quickly regardless of advantage. You'll receive bonuses based on the number of enemies defeated. Your HP will not reach zero regardless of damage taken. Uh, okay, to fill the gauge, pick up blue tonics, damage enemies, execute a critical rush. Press A while awakened or completely deplete the awakening gauge to trigger a warrior special and end the awakened state. Do you feel that power? Maybe you can channel it like you did in the other battle. You're Not sure if that was quite what I wanted to do. Uh, there we go. I'll take you all on. In the state, focus on Costas and just absolutely annihilate him. We leveled up. Gotta keep aiming higher. That, that's an insane level up. If it's the same as three houses, a, a level up for pretty much every stat. Okay, uh, defeating enemies to gain ex uh, defeat enemies to gain experience, leveling up your units, improving their stats. A unit stat growth will depend on their uh, own individual qualities. Hit points. A unit's maximum HP depletes uh, with uh, HP depletes with damage. When it reaches zero, a unit will retreat or, or fall in battle. Strength affects the attack power of physical attacks. Magic is for magic attacks. Dex affects the attack power of critical rushes as well as critical hit rate. I believe in three houses it did hit. It, I think it did critical. It was something to do with critical hit rate, but it. it actually, I might. You know what? I can't remember what it did. It might not have been a stat. <laughs> Speed affects the duration of the awakened state and recharge uh, time for combat arts and magic. Luck affects the appearance rate of recovery items. Defense, defense against physical, resistance, defense against magic. Charm affects the drain rate of a battalion's endurance. Yeah, yeah, I had it mixed up with, I was gonna say what it was, but I think I had it mixed up with char uh, charm from three houses, which also exists here. Right, get him. You're already dead. We cannot allow ourselves to perish here. I'm afraid we must spare no mercy for you. Uh, never should have taken this job. Is it over? I think so. Stage complete. All right, I'll take four S's. You obtain the following as an S rank and first time reward. White Verona and first time reward is a bullion. I'm assuming the fact it says that probably means that you can retry these and like rerun them. Okay. After battle, the battle rank will grade you based on your performance in battle. There are five ranks, S, A, B, C, and D. Higher ranks will net you more experience in gold. Your battle rank is determined by three factors, completion time, enemies defeated, damage taken. Additionally, the first time you complete a quest, you'll also receive a first time reward. You'll also receive an S rank reward the first time you achieve S rank as your result. Cool, that's pretty good, I'd say. We leveled up again. Gotta keep aiming higher. Honestly, I don't hate that level up either. The first one I think was better, but two points in strength, very nice. MVP. I won't let myself stop here. Oh, it was the main character? Oh, if you're MVP, you get an additional XP reward? Ooh, okay. The unit who performed best in battle will be selected as MVP. The MVP unit will gain additional experience. What's interesting about this is it's probably going to encourage you to well, either one play as one character to super increase their level, or it's going to encourage like playing as different characters because. I would guess most of the time the character that you play as will be MVP, assuming that you're playing correctly, so yeah. Okay, interesting. We leveled up again. I like hearing the level up sound. Gotta keep aiming higher. Our strength is very good. I'm very happy with this. Combat Arts and Magic will level up after they've been used a set number of times. This uh, will make them stronger, reduce the weapon durability loss when they're used. 
So make sure to use the combat arts um, because when you get into like tougher fights, you want to have them available. Uh, and you want to have them leveled. Any units participating in battle will receive class experience post-battle. I also just realized that probably in the earlier battles, they make it so your durability can't hit zero. So it's probably a cheese strategy to like just spam those uh, like as early as possible so that you get them without the durability loss. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. If this raises their class level, they may acquire new combat arts, magic and abilities and their weapon level may increase. Okay. When a unit's weapon level increases, they'll be able to equip more powerful weapons. They'll be able to attack more times consecutively. Awesome. I hate that I see fish in the list. That implies there may be fishing. After battle, you'll be able to check the contents of weapon packs and resource pouches you acquired in battle. If you've reached your inventory limit, excess items will be sold off automatically. Stat boosting items give stat boost to the selected unit. You can use stat boosting items by selecting storehouse from the pause menu. Alright, so this would give resistance. That's magic, um, that, like, that's magic defense. Okay. Now we have a bunch of these things which don't really matter. They'll probably be for crafting or something. And then we get money based upon how well we did. Awesome. It does say facility effect, so yeah, there must be a meta like building aspect or like upgrading thing. Hang on. You're seriously the Imperial Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance? Yes. And as the three of us are now in your debt, I think formal introductions are in order. My name is Edelgard von Hressfeld, Princess of the Adrestian Empire. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathen. Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. And I'm Claude Von Regan, grandson of the leader of the Leicester Alliance. Things looked grim there for a moment. Thanks to you, we put those bandits to flight. Bit of a miracle we ran into you out there, but hey, I'll take it. Hmm. I'm gonna play it cool. Oh, I'm sure the three of you could have handled the situation just fine without me. No need for false humility. We'd likely have perished if not for your help. Well, aren't they an unlikely trio? I wonder why those bandits were after them. Still, it's no concern of ours. We have our own plans to attend to. Now, collect your pay and be off before they get a wild idea and ask you to join them. <laughs> yeah, how weird would that be? Say, while I have you here, do you know where I can find Remire Village? I took a wrong turn somewhere along the way. I'm looking for a band of hardened mercenaries who follow a man named Gerald. I hear rumors that's where they're camped. Actually, Remire might just be the village we've been looking for, too. That ring a bell, Edelgard? I don't remember hearing anything about Mercs, but... The name sounds correct, at least. <sighs> Gerald's too smart to get smoked out by a bunch of rumors, but they're all I've got at the moment. In any case, we won't find our own two feet in all this dark. We should return to camp and get our bearings before... Hello there, house leaders. Hello, brave mercenary. Hello, Aloise. We've mopped up what's left of those rascals. So what say we return to camp? And I insist you accompany us, good mercenary. Who, me? You heard the man. We'll wait out the night together and make for the village in the morning. It's a great plan, especially if you want to get paid, as we're a tiny bit short on pocket change at the moment. Yes, and those mercenaries you're looking for? Gerald's band, was it? They may be in Ramire village tonight, but there's no telling when they'll move on. If you come back to our camp, we have maps that may help you get one step ahead of them. This is clearly the wisest course of action. Not to mention that I would enjoy conversing with you further. Oh. But of course, the choice is yours. Uh. Uh. I can, I can decline? No, I'm gonna go with them, but I'm assuming this is a fake decline. It's like, oh no, we insist. <sighs> Why can't things ever be simple? All right, no, but just for the night. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, just for the night and then the entire game. Perfect. Then might I borrow you for a moment after we reach camp? There is a matter we must speak about. Nothing alarming, I promise you. Right then, so off we go. But, uh, if I may, did I hear you mention a Gerald earlier? Why, you did. Yes, do you know him? 
He heads up a pretty elite band of mercenaries, so I imagine his name is spread all over Fodland by now. Mercenaries, is it? No. No, it can't be him. Can it? Well, I'll just have to meet this Gerald myself. After I've seen my duties through, of course. After all, if I don't finish my assigned tasks, I'm mission the point. Oh! <laughs> Get it? Missing? Mission? Come now, this is good stuff! It is. It's good. <laughs> That's our Aloise. Come on, let's get moving before he really gets going. Ooh. The whole gang's here. Battle prep. After a battle, you'll be able to interact with your allies back at camp. Press A when near a unit to talk to them. Well, I think... Can we make that any smaller in the top left? Probably not. Anyway, I think that this is a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching. Next time, we have a lot of people to catch up with that we previously have uh, spoken to. As well as some random NPCs, apparently. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. It's good being back in the Fire Emblem world. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribing, all of that sort of stuff. I only mentioned this on the first video of a series because it really helps with search ranking and SEO and it helps uh, the series kind of get off to a good start. Won't mention it after this point, so, you know, don't worry about being badgered for uh, likes and subscribes. So. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of this. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.